So, good afternoon, everyone. First and foremost, I would like to apologize if my voice and the reverberating all over the place. It is not something that I can control. So, I hope that it would not be disrupting you in any way possible. So, none of that is sad. I would like to see your chairs arranged in the way that it should be. And please pick up the pieces of paper loitering around the places. Thank you. May I request everyone to stand up so that we can partake into a prayer ceremony so as to be graced by the God's presence. Can anyone lead the prayer, please? Yes, we serve God that we can do so. In the name of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, now that we are um, graced with the presence of the Lord, I would like to um, ask everyone to be seated, be quiet, and listen to what will happen now that we are here into the class. So, before we start the session, I would, um, go, I would be checking the attendance first. So, if your name is called, please um, raise your hand and acknowledge your presence. Mr. Verdico? Yes, present. All right. Now that we all have checked the attendance, I'd like to congratulate everyone for this um, very admirable presence of course. Everyone was actually around, so that makes my heart warm because I see that everyone is willing to hear it in, is willing to grasp the intricacy of literature, and that's something that I want to praise you all with. So, um, just like what I have reminded you yesterday, we are going to talk about the dead stars and its contemporary significance, like what I have learned or like what I have um, instructed. You are to, you know, read the literary work since it is nine pages. It's going to take us a lot of time if you're going to read it just now. So um, the reason why I, I have it, um, I have given it to you as an advanced reading is for you to actually be able to highlight that there are devices such as those that I have mentioned in the GC, which are the local colors, stereotypes, and the paradox. This tree will form part of our discussion today, so I hope that you did your part in making sure that the literary, or the literary work has been read and has been annotated as instructed. But of course, I will understand if there are some who are unable to do so. But before that, I would like to talk about our classroom rules. I know that all of us has been acquainted with this for a long time now, and it's been repeated over and over again, that it seemed already so bothersome or um, annoying in a sense. But of course, I'd like to, um, to give you this idea that although this has been repeated quite a lot of times, I see that there are really some students who still keep on violating these things, and while I will not go so far as to judge them, I wanted to you know, realize I wanted to make you realize that these things needed to be upheld and embodied so as to, um, so that we could have um, the best discussion and engaging and a more organized one at that. So for the first rule, of course, it's to treat everyone in the classroom with respect. So we know respect is not something that should be given, but of course that is something that you should upheld because respect is something that will help us delineate or be in line to what others would usually um, treat as well. I'm not saying that if others disrespect you, you should disrespect them. I'm saying that you should treat others with um, worthy respect so that they would respect you as well. For our next rule, you have to contribute your ideas ask questions and engage in the learning process. Um, in this contemporary society, our, our role or your role as a student is not to merely listen to me talking. Of course, you also have to be able to contribute or to um, share your thoughts to the rest of the class. And while it's not, um, while I know that you may have the fear that your ideas are not really that empowered or not really 
um, helpful or knowledgeable in terms of the subject that we have in hand. But of course, if your idea is not yours, they are up for debate or up for um, something to talk about. So I don't want each of you to just give your thoughts to yourself. Don't worry, we will not judge, we will help you understand or express your um, thought process pretty well. And the, last, and the last rule that we have to keep in mind is to come to class prepared, of course. This is something that you all should have already been, you know, doing for quite some time now. Starting from your elementary days, high school days, and now that you're in college, of course, you will always have to come to school prepared because um, the classroom, the classroom is not just a room for learning. It is a battle. It is a battle of um, getting or receiving learning. So you really have to be capable of building this knowledge because if you are not ready to process this thought, I don't think we can be, um, we can come to terms with teaching because if you're not ready yourself or if you're not um, if your thoughts are elsewhere or if you are not really invested into the subject that we are going to talk about, then everything else won't matter. It will be hard for you to actually understand what is being talked about. But of course, I will, I will help. I am here. I am your teacher. And we are going to um, make sure that you won't go out of this class without learning anything. And that being said, we would I would like for us all to watch a summary of Dead Stories by Paz Marcus Benitez. This is the reading activity that we have given you last um, last session, something that you must agree in advance. But of course, I have prepared, um, I have browsed the internet for a for a video that will encapsulate the overall ideas of the story itself. This is so um, we could all be reacquainted to the narrative. And for those who are not able to read the literary corpus for some reasons, um, this will also help you have the overview or a glance of what the story is about. So now sit back, relax, and enjoy this short video. All right. This video summary is actually quite good, although it is a retelling, it was able to encapsulate or really summarize the key points of the story itself. And I, I think this will help everyone be capable of answering or participating in the discussion later on. So now, for our first activity, this is actually quite simple. Yeah, first, this is quite simple to I want you to be, you know, I want you to be on fire. Because if we are going to delve into the fire, into the, um, into the midst of the treasure, your passion will help into uncovering the things that must be uncovered later on. So this activity is called Narrate and Illustration. From the title alone, you could already have a glimpse of what this activity might be about. So, Simply put, this activity is just an observation. You will just have to observe what this illustration entails, what this illustration makes you feel or gives you an idea. Your um, observation, you will be sharing them all into this um, sticky notes that I will be giving you. I want, um, you don't need to fill everything in this uh, sticky note, but of course, I want you to think about, to think really hard of what you will be um, putting into this piece of paper because after the remnants of observation and um, thinking about what this illustration will be about, you will be sharing your sticky notes into the board and it would be um, something that would look like an exhibit but just a smaller version of it. And a much simpler one of that. And of course, I would call some volunteers. If there are none, of course, I would call students so that we would have an engaging discussion as well. 
So now your time starts. All right, time's up, everyone. I would like I would like to request for everyone to please stand and um, post your um, sticky notes on the board. Please don't make some noise and please keep on to um, being surveilled or being organized still, even though we are going to sing. Thank you. All right. I'm quite glad that everyone was able to actually share their thoughts or um, have this impressions about the illustration and seeing the, the colors, the different colors from the board is actually making me quite happy because it gives us an idea of individualized perspectives and these things is actually something that I'd like to highlight because literature class is not about having one thought, one linear perspective. Literature class is having the very point of view because literature itself impacts us in a different way and that is something that I want to see later on. Now, may I call on the volunteers to give us an idea of what they have written on board. Any hand? Yes, Mr. Bacala, you are raising your hand. Alright, thank you for that thought. So Mr. Bacala here said that this illustration portrays a fading relationship. Wow, that's quite deep. Um, he was saying that the proof for that, for what he has claimed for, is the fading part, is for the fading particles of the heart. And it's actually quite perceptible of him to actually notice of this. It's not really that obvious, but when you come and think about it, um, when, a, I mean, when a heart has its particle um, floating away from its um, from its figure, that just tells us that the, uh, the, uh, there is vanishing motions from between two horses. And, and that's something that most of us can relate because, of course, we cannot always be on the same line with other people and we cannot always have this um, you know, perspective that people will always be with us because, of course, change is the only thing constant in the world. Any hand? Any other volunteers, please? Yes, Miss Neo, you were raising your hand. Alright, thank you for that thought. So, Miss Neo here said that this illustration impacts or um, resonate with him in with her in a whole different day. Um, unlike what Mr. Bakaba had said, she believes that this picture portrays how um, how two people in a relationship were trying so hard to keep their love together despite the fact that their heart is fading away from their relationship. And of course, there are people really who will be capable of resonating to this idea because um, there are those who would rather keep their themselves together than go apart because they love each other. And that's something I cannot question, of course. Last volunteer, please. Yes, Miss Manila, you are raising your hand. Thank you for that perspective, Miss Manila. So, Miss Manila here, of course, um, contains really this illustration as something that actually mirrors the story in um, and the dead star. And I'm quite, uh, I'm quite impressed that she was able to juxtapose the similarities and differences of dead, uh, the concept of dead stars in this illustration. So for her, there was actually, although it's not directly implied in the illustration, there was actually a third party on the, on the line because the fading particle is actually going to, uh, going to, I mean, bridging to another person, which is actually someone that has stolen the heart of the man who was hiding from the man. And, well, 
in this contemporary world, this kind of concept is actually not quite new, especially since we all have this um, attachment or immediate attraction to people that doesn't really um, doesn't really have that long bond with us yet. But of course, when we met them, we had this perception that we want to be with them and we want to, you know, to love them and be in a relationship with them. And well, that's their truth. That's their story, and we cannot we cannot do anything about it. We have to mend our own distance after all. But of course, um, when you come and think about it, it's quite sad that although we already are in a relationship. Part of us um, somehow you need to support other bonds and that's um, the discontent to the relationship is actually quite bothersome in a sense because um, when you love someone you should be contented to her or him but of course um, there really are changes that occur in us and that change might actually just be about um, Having this feeling that we are not for this kind of person. All right. Now that our activity is done, I'd like to thank everyone who participated in this activity, and I'd like to appreciate your thoughts and the varying opinions about the matter. I respect your ideas, and these ideas are actually quite perceptive in a sense, and I like hearing them because it also gives me an idea of how you think as a person and what your moral standards are. So thank you very much. Now, we would be welling into the background of the author. So why do we need to talk about this? Of course, we have to have an idea of the life of the author herself so that we can connect or we can see how this literary purpose as made to life, of course, because authors themselves, uh, although we cannot really imply that one, or we cannot directly say that it's true, um, authors would really come to um, pour themselves, or a, a part of their soul, in their stories, because their stories are a part of themselves. So it's quite, you know, it's quite interesting. So, Lazar is the nature is an influential Filipino author. But from her work alone, you can see how brave she is. Because you can, um, it's in a world, in a traditional world, where marriages or where, where the standards of the societies, the thing itself is being upheld. She was able to portray a narrative where her thoughts about, or where she portrayed or illustrated a character confused which of his will to follow, whether to follow social construct or her his own desire. And actually this is quite true in a lot of people. But of course, there are times that this is not seen in a society because society dictates how a person should act. And that's not even saying how what society really entails because most of the time, society really builds your life and actually direct it somewhere. And I cannot say something about that matter. Um, Paz Marcos Benitez was born on March 3, 1894 on the Sina City. Her notable work is, of course, Dead Stars. And he was, she was associated with the drug, the Tratista. And, of course, her contribution to modern film and literature is a lack of nice. Of course, her revolutionary work, Dead Stars, is something that makes um, her known and somehow um, illustrates how much she wants to change the, the way society stands. And not everyone is able to, to actualize their thoughts about um, society itself because they're afraid that they might be judged or they may be ostracized. So, of course, that's something that we should all talk about later. Here's a picture of the literary author that we were just referring to earlier. She is um, the woman who is first led to a literary writer. Um, 
Um, this is actually one of the passages or one of the phrases that can be found in the literary work that we will be talking about earlier. So all these years since when? Yet we see the light of dead stars, long extinguished, yet seemingly still in their appointed places in the heavens. This is actually quite an intriguing narrative or an intriguing phrase that encapsulates the overall theme and underlying message of the story itself. And this phrase is a quote that can be uh, resonated to someone who have lost feelings with someone. And this actually pertains to how a person will have this longing for someone that they cannot have, but a part of them already understands that they have already long been out of love with this kind of person. But of course, another part of them does not believe so. So the conflict and the um, the conflicting ideas in their head makes it makes it hard for them to let go of the concept that they have had in mind or the imaginations or the desires they had in their system. And that's something that most of us can relate or most of you being youth themselves can relate. And this is um, something that I like to highlight because this pertains to having to let go with something that can no longer be yours or something that no longer um, partakes on the life that you wanted to accomplish in the future. Um, now we would be dwelling with the literary context and historical context of the text. For the literary context, that story is a pioneering Filipino school short story in English. It is published in 1925 and it holds a literary significance because of course, as I have mentioned earlier, this story um, somehow attacks the society itself and showcases that there are really people who struggle to uphold or to keep on what society is trying to um, instill into their system. Because, you know, society sometimes can be, can be commanding in a sense, authoritative even, because it would tell you how to live your life and judge you while you're living your life in that way. And I think most of us can relate in this kind of thoughts because most of us would want to really move away from the society, but we come to realize that we cannot really set ourselves or separate ourselves from society itself. Because society is what makes us people. After all, no one is an island. Right? All right. Now we would be going to the historical context of the story. So that star reflects American colonial rule. It is published in 1925, as I've said earlier. It features the tradition transition period, and it reflects American influence on language. As you can observe on Benitez's writing style, um, the distortion on the grammar is actually something that most native writers native English writers used to do. And it's actually quite something that makes this story itself revolutionary in a sense because it shows or Benitez was able to show Filipino writers the way in which the language itself can be manifested truly. If you master the language indeed, you will be, you will be capable of distorting it in any way and it will be sophisticated. Of course, I'm not saying that grammar itself cannot be um, taken into account or can be disregarded. All I'm saying is that in order for you to manifest or to break the rule, you have to know it first. Um, of course, that star explores societal norms and conflicting desires. If you have read the story, you'll understand that. that the main pressure or the conflict of the story comes from the fact that um, Alfredo, or the main character of the story, has his personal desires conflicting his duty as dictated by the society. And we will be talking about that. 
So I have actually highlighted three vocabulary words that can be found in the story. And they are tumultuous, perverted, and placidity. I know most of you would say that, Teacher Leonard, why did you only highlight three when there are a lot of vocabulary words that are interesting, um, mind boggling and actually puzzling in a sense? But of course, I'd like to give you the chance or the platform to share the vocabulary words that you have in mind. But of course, I will give you the platform for that later. For now, let's talk about these vocabulary words. I have highlighted or I have um, delineated four different keywords that can be associated with the vocabulary terms I have mentioned earlier or I have written. So for tumultuous, we have chaotic, turbulent, stormy, and predictable. So from these keywords, what do you think um, turbulent or tumultuous might be? Yes, remember Hista, you were saying something? Of course, you were saying that this term is quite sporadic in a sense because it has chaotic in this. Am I right you were saying that? Yes, you were saying it's sporadic in a sense. Well, it might be. For a verb, we have passionate, ardent, intense, and zealous. From these key terms, what do you think might this term imply? Of course, you're saying that perfervent is actually something that overemphasizes something. Am I right, Mr. Margul Margala? Yes. So for placidity, we have serene, tranquil, peaceful, and unbroken. So quite unlike with the two terms that I have highlighted earlier, what do you think makes placidity quite different in a sense? Yes, Ms. Neoldo. Ms. Neoldo says that placidity is um, highlighting a calmer or a more soothing atmosphere rather than the two. And that's quite good observation. And that's something that I want to give you a clap to. So now, now that we are acquainted, now that we know what this story is about, now that we have an idea of how this story will go, I would like to group the class into five. No, no, no. Don't make a noise yet. This is not actually a big activity yet. But this is an activity that will give me an idea how much you know the story. So, we have Actually, this is going to be just about reading, so you can calm down now. So reading in a sense that I will give you passages from the story, which dictates the exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and the uh, um, And of course, group one will discuss the first plot structure, and group two will discuss the second one, and group three will discuss the third one, and so on and so forth. But um, for the manifestation of uh, your readings, of course, I will be reading the passage first, and you will follow afterwards. This is so that you can have a model, or you can have an idea how the words are articulated. But um, for the groupings itself, I want it to be just one more. So we will start um, counting from one to five, starting from you, Mr. Everesto, and down to the last person, Ms. Nigo. Start the counting, please. All right, now that the group has been settled and unraveled, we will have, I want you to sit on the um, platform or the arrangement you are going to be assigned. For group one, you will be here, group two there, group three in the center, and group four there at five at the um, opposing position of the group one. Okay. For our meeting starts, I want you to keep in mind that there is yet another activity that you will do in this kind of activity. So if you come and think about it, this will be an activity inside an activity. Quite, um, in quite repetitive in a sense, but it quite makes sense as well. 
So this is an activity called Note Me Tax. The materials that we will need is a short cut paper, a next card, and a course of hand. You will be providing yourself with this kind of materials and of course I've already sent the instruction yesterday at our workshop and I hope everyone was able to read it. But for the benefit of those who are not able to do so, this activity will be just about taking note the literary devices that can be found in the narrative. But I want you to focus into three devices, which are local colors, stereotypes, and paradox. And then from the highlighted devices, I want the group to actually create a visual representation, either a drawing or an illustration of what this literary devices illustrate or what this literary devices can portray in the scene. And of course, after the activity, you will be given the opportunity to present your work. This, um, your, your activity, this not me last activity, will be, um, will be done while you are reading. But of course, I will give you three more minutes after the reading to actually finish what you started. Okay, can we start now? Alright, that's the spirit, guys. So let's start from one. As I said, I will read the passage first. You may now read it. Book two, I will read the passage first. Okay, you may now read it. Book three, I will read the passage first. Now you can read it. Book four and book five. Alright, that was a really very good kind of reading because everyone was able to follow the instruction and everyone was just well organized. So now, I will give you three more minutes to finish the highlighting and the visual representation that I have asked from you. Alright, time's up. Um, may I request the representative of the group to share your thoughts or your, what you have created on the board and of course explain what this entails. Alright. Oh, okay. That was a really very good performance out there. You have shown me that you cannot just be creative, but you can also portray a deeper understanding to a literary life, despite it being yet to be discussed. And that's something I want to appreciate from all of you, with, because not everyone can manifest this kind of comprehension. But of course, we will see how much deeper can you um, can you dive into a literary work? And I will dive in there. Don't worry. Alright, now we will be moving on to the nice one on the front of her. So these are the, uh, the literary devices I have allowed you to highlight in the text. And now we're going to see if your understanding really fits and is really signifying what its denotation is showing. Is actually implying. So for local colors, local colors is a device used by an author to um, reflect the social cultural background of the society, of a specific society, into the narrative of the story. This is to portray unique characteristics, cultures, customs, and dialects of a particular group. And you know, this is actually one way of beneath this to portray how the Philippines is because you know when you write in English you have a global audience and by um, putting in the culture of the Philippines into that literary work that can go far is actually making it known to the world that this is how the Philippines is this is how it is done in our country and that's quite good for certain times this one right here is um, a literary device that uh, helps an author quickly establish how a character is done because um, most stereotypes comes from the fact that there's a, you know, a generalized thought or ideas about how this specific notion or character or perspective or ideas even is presented and that's what makes it uh, quite contradicting in this sense because you know 
as Marcus Mini just said, Star is actually quite a complex story, and yet there are a lot of stereotypes in there. And this sadly much the fact that you can be magnificent or you can make a word look, look sophisticated by even portraying stereotypical um, perspectives. And for the last one, we have the paradox. Paradox is a literary device that involves the use of contrary radius statements or situations that appear illogical at first, but upon closer examination, reveal a deeper meaning, a deeper truth or a meaning. And we have already been acquainted with this quite a lot of times already. So we're going to get on to the literary devices that are specific to the dead stores so that you will be a better understand what this turns in mind. For local colors, we have Mary at a certain age, attending a mass every Sunday, celebrating holiday, and broken marriages being best accepted. In the, um, in the culture of the Philippines, um, in a traditional context, of course, these truths are um, reflective and is very much something that is resonating in the society and it actually juxtaposed into the narrative. So here at a certain age, this has been defined in the exposition of the story itself, wherein one of the characters was quite furious or quite impatient due to the fact that um, Alfredo, the main character, is yet to get married and this just shows that the society before plays importance to age, uh, to age groups. So if you're in this certain age, you will have to really go through that kind of process where when you marry yourself or you have um, you involve yourself in marital um, marital relationship and have children and lives and all. Of course, you um, as as a devotion or as as a reflection of, of our religious affiliation, um, traditional perspective doesn't um, doesn't goes with without um, going to masses in uh, in, um, in a consistent basis. So of course, um, you have to really show that you are um, you upheld the belief in a religious manner by by just attending the masses. And of course, this has been shown by the way Alfredo is actually going to the churches every um, every Sunday, and that's in a consistent pattern as well. So for stereotypes, we have the standardized notion of women and women following the lead of men in a relationship. So as I was saying earlier, um, in the story, women are portrayed as submissive or someone who just follows the lead of men. In a relationship, they are not allowed to really voice out their opinion, or they are or they are silenced by the society because their opinions are only ever significant if they are with their husband or if they are affiliated with a man. And this just shows how women are underpowered before, and somehow this quite simplifies how beautiful their situations are. But of course, this is. Um, this story is one way of beneath us to actually challenge the um, societal norms or the societal expectations and um, true cases is that women cannot just be an object of men's desire or someone who just have married a certain man to somehow give their um, limitations or their being um, um, a member of society. Last the third device is paradox. So the title itself is paradox because it suggests a whole or an extinguishment. And there is a contrast between expectations and reality. And of course, it symbolizes crushed hopes and hope and represents unrealized potential. The last paradox is for love is intuitive because the stranger to love is a divine being. It, uh, it connotes to a divergent view on love and juxtapose the love as um, idealized and the love that is um, practically the truth of 
the concept. And somehow this shows a gap between experience and just imagined love. Moving on, I have just a simple question for all of you to ponder on. Of course, this can, um, this can manifest how much you understand the cultural context or the context in which the story was presented or the story was told. So the first question goes, how does the portrayal of Alfredo's consistent church attendance contribute to the exploration of this identity? Yes, Mr. Cardinal, sir, you were raising your hand. All right. Of course, I believe that you are right in saying that this shows how fragile or how inconsistent human attributes can be. Of course, men themselves cannot um, cannot really stay um, stay true to their devotion without being tempted to the temptation of, 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 of their desire, of their inner turmoil, or the inner child that is within them. And that's something I want to um, agree with you. But I want to ask any more perception. Yes, Ms. Badina, you raise your hand. Of course, thank you for that thought. You were saying that um, this consistent church attendance actually shows how hypocritical people can be and how um, how this shows that not be uh, not being devotional or religious by um, by showing how consistent you can attend a church that does not necessarily imply that you're already a good person because um, a good person is not someone who who, who loves another person when they are already engaged. Is that what you were saying, Mr. Rodina? Yes, of course. Thank you. Now, for the next question, we have, do you believe that the inclusion of the story was unfair to the two heroes? Does this mean an implication of a mistreated gender representation, considering that both ethics would have benefited the men? So let me just explain for a little bit, just background. Why this? Uh, why the ending would be unfair for both women? Because of course, when you come and think about it, um, the story portrays um, Julia as someone who is the, um, objectified and is really something that is desired by by the man, which is a brother himself. But when you go and think about Esperanza. Esperanza is portrayed as the traditional woman who is um, who is just the um, the duty or this object of duty for Alfredo because he is engaged with her. So this makes her. Uh, this makes him. Uh, this makes her his responsibility to uphold, especially since that's what. Um, society wanted him to accomplish. So, any hand? Yes, you raise your hand, Mr. Bakara. You're acknowledged. All right. Thank you for that thought. So, you were saying that the story is unfair to both heroes. Of course, I can attest to that as well. Any ideas? Yes, Ms. New York. You were saying your thing? All right. You were saying that the story is unfair as well, and that it represented how gender are misaligned or um, um, not really um, represented in an equal manner. So that makes um, that makes the story somehow reflective of the society. Because it juxtaposes or it shows how how women are are treated in the past, and I want to applaud you for that nice observation. So now, now that we are acquainted to the discussion or to the literary analysis, I want to ask you have another opinion. This time, it's called unfolding constellation. So, 
the goal is to select one main character from the story. And the thing that you will use here is the sticky note. I will be providing you with the sticky notes later. And that's two sticky notes actually. One is for the character portrayal or the character you want to talk about. And the other is for the um, for the drawing out of your observation regarding their character traits, actions, or their relationship with other characters. And of course, after this, you I will give you a piece of yarn and you will um, piece together your your narrative or what you observe for certain characters on the board. And um, somehow this would look like a constellation. And that's why it's titled Unfolding Constellation. So what you will do is um, explain as well how this constellation that you have created reveal the complexities of the story or what patterns or recurring themes emerged in this space. Alright, I will give you five minutes to accomplish this um, activities. Your timer starts now. Alright, that's it. I want you all to um, post your sticky notes on the board and do the um, constellating thing with the piece of yarn that I've given you for us. Alright, thank you everyone. I want to ask a few volunteers to partake into the representation or discussion of the things that they have written on their sticky notes. Alright, thank you everyone for the participation. I really appreciate it. But this time, we would be willing to get another activity, which is the literary circle. This is actually um, something that is done, that we've done in our college days. And I want you all to experience this kind of thing. And of course, since I've already given you the story beforehand, I think this is going to be a pretty much easy activity for you. And you will have four stations. Since we have five groups, I want, um, I will be with you later on. But first I want to divulge or disclose the uh, mechanics of these activity. So we have the four stations in our second year. First station is where you will write literary questions that you can think of for the story itself. And then the second station is for the literary luminary. You will share specific scenes that resonate with you from the story. And then in station three, we have the connector. And the connector's job is to actually think of a related story that can be connoted to the uh, narrative that we just read. And of course, the last is for the creative part. Either you will write um, a poetic write back or an illustration or a dramatic interpretation for the story, that's up to you. And the goal is to see who finishes first without affecting the quality of the work. In the case that um, your work has not met the standard, of course, there would no need, even though you are um, the first placer or the first one to accomplish all the things, you will, be, uh, you will not be rewarded in the first place because there would be no winners in that. This will this activity will run for 20 minutes, which is which means that first um, the first station to the fourth station will only have five minutes. So you really have to manage your time. So as for the groupings, I want to have another recount, starting from one to four. Start from you and you can ask. Okay. Um you will simultaneously go into um into each station. And when they're being um when the ring goes, um, you will be moving on to the next until one of you is able to accomplish every station. Alright, is that clear? Okay, so here is the criteria. You will just have to keep this in mind as you go through our stations. Alright. Are we ready? That's the spirit. That this literary circle begins. Okay, thank you everyone for the participation. And I appreciate everyone going on with the way of our rules and making sure not to disorganize themselves while the stations are ongoing.
So now, now that we are finished with the literary circle, we will now proceed to our evaluation. Of course, I want you to get um, one particular paper, and uh, I know not one particular paper, but uh, um, let's make it one half sheet of paper um, crosswise because we will have this, um, as this evaluation will have three parts. Um, we have multiple choices, um, matching time and essays. And so you will just write your answers on the papers. All right, please submit your works in front and I will be the one who's going to check these things. Thank you. For now, we would, I will not be giving you any more assignments because I feel like um, you needed a rest for a really wonderful, um, productive, and energetic performance that you have had today. All right. Thank you for joining this discussion and may you have a great day ahead of you. And that's all for today's class this week. Thank you, everyone.